Christina, I'd like to uh, turn back to you and um, have you comment about risk assessment in polycythemia. Yeah, so risk assessment is based primarily on two factors within polycythemia vera. Number one, how old is the patient? Uh, greater than 60 or less than 60. And then number two, have they prior, did they have a prior history of a thrombotic event? And so if they are young and have not had a history of a thrombotic event, then they are a low risk polycythemia vera patient. And on the flip side, if they um, are uh, more advanced age, I, as I'm, you know, aging into the 40s that, you know, advanced age at 60 is hard to really state, but as they're, as they're, um, you know, getting older, and it's not a magic cutoff, right? And so they're 59 years old, and all of a sudden they turn 60. That does not mean that all, all of a sudden their thrombotic risk goes up. And so I think we have to take that into consideration as we're treating these patients, and look at some of the other factors that we're really thinking about when we're assessing thrombotic risk. And so what are some of those factors? And those are really the cardiovascular factors that we would assess as a primary care physician. Do they have underlying diabetes, underlying coronary artery disease, hyperlipidemia? Are they obese? Are they smokers? And so it's really, I think, a personalized approach when you're assessing polycythemia vera and their thrombotic risk. And I, I think it really leads to an opportunity for discussion for our patients in regards to these lifestyle measures. And that's really an area of my own personal passion is that we're treating patients. We are not treating CBCs or a hematologic profile. And so it's so, so important, I think, as hematologists to be assessing these risk factors, to be assessing lifestyle, and to be addressing them not just identifying them to be talking about these things. 